Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial on the Wavetable Synth Serum. In the first part we just went through the basics of where everything is within the synth um, and then in this part we're going to look at how to actually use the Wavetable oscillators. Um, now these are the main sound generating parts of the synth so it's good to really get to grips with it and know what you're doing. So we're going to just mainly focus on oscillator A, oscillator a and oscillator B are essentially set up exactly the same, but it just allows you to layer a couple of sounds together if you so choose. So we have uh, our preset options at the top here um, and pitching options just underneath that. Now, one of the first and most sort of striking things that makes Serum stand out from other wavetables since that I've used, such as Massive, is the way that it visualizes what you're doing. So at the moment, uh, we are just on the default um, patch at the moment. Uh, and you can see there's a sort of saw wave type shape uh, going on. Now, if I click on that, then it's going to turn it into a kind of a 3D view. Now, at the moment, there is literally, we're using a wavetable where there's literally just one saw wave shape in it. So it doesn't look very interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the wavetable menu at the top, go to spectral, and I'm going to choose monster one. And all of a sudden you've got this really cool representation of uh, what's going on within your wavetable. And as I move this wavetable position, you can see it scrolling through in real time. So I'm going to play a note and move the wavetable position and you're actually going to be able to see and hear exactly what is going on in there. So I find this very helpful because it actually allows me to visualize a little bit about what's uh, going on in there. So if I scroll through and find other presets, you start to learn that you can understand a little bit about how it's going to sound in a given place. So you can see how down, down here, where we've got a few longer uh, wave shapes, we get a bit of a lower sound than up this end where it's all very quick, sharp, spiky peaks. So it's very, very handy, um, especially since quite often you won't find yourself using the entirety of a wavetable range. You might just use a chunk of it. So it's very helpful to just see which bit might be applicable for what you're uh, actually trying to go for. Now, the next uh, part of the oscillator that I want to look at is uh, this dial down the bottom here, which normally is set to off by default. Now what this is, is it allows you to set the warp modes uh, that you're using um, by clicking down here and choosing from the menu or by scrolling through like so. Now this essentially sets how you actually warp the wavetable itself and uh, it's easiest to see what it's doing actually in the two-dimensional view. So. If I change it onto sync and move that dial up, you will see how it affects it. And I'm going to play a note while I'm doing that so that we can hear what kind of effect that that has as well. Now there's quite a lot of these options, uh, including there's a FM option as well down the bottom from various different oscillators and AM as well. Um, so. It, it always behaves quite differently depending on what sounds you put into it. So it's really a matter of just scrolling through and finding something that works well. Let's try bend plus minus. So this is a really nifty thing to uh, get involved when you feel like you found a cool wavetable, but maybe that you just want a bit more interest in there. Um, Try getting some warp modes involved, see how it changes the sound, um, uh, just add a bit of extra flavour. Next up we've got the unison settings, which are at the top here. So you can see there's uh, 
Unison, Detune and Blend. They're all part of the Unison settings. So uh, you can set the Unison up to 16 voices, I believe. Yeah. Um, and what you can see here with the green and the yellow lines um, is that the yellow ones are the original source and the green ones are the detuned Unison versions. Now you can change the detune amount. So if I play a note at the moment, we're on 12, which is quite a high Unison setting. You can really hear it has that kind of chorus sound. Um, as all the different versions phase with each other. Now I'm going to actually move the unison detune dial so that you can hear how that sounds. As I push it up it's going to get more detuned and as I pull it down to the left it's going to get less detuned. So that gives you a fair amount of control there. And then we've got blend, which will essentially change the balance between the original source and the detuned Unison versions. And it will display that in the same graphic over the top of the wavetable when I use it, like so. So for example, when it's like this, we've got some very, very quiet uh, Unison mirrors of our original sound, but mainly what we're gonna hear is the source like so, whereas if I flip it the other way, we're mainly going to hear the detuned unison versions. Um, and we've also got uh, on the right hand side a few extra controls that are slightly more usual uh, for a synthesizer. So uh, we have our phase, which essentially chooses where the wavetable starts playing from. The RAND dial uh, decides whether it starts from a random phase every time you press a key or whether it's completely locked to this first phase dial. So I tend to turn this all the way down so that it's completely predictable every time. Uh, and then you can use the phase to choose your starting position. Uh, there's a PAN dial, so you can pan it to the left or the right. Uh, and a level dial just so you can mix it in however you so choose. Now there's also uh, the option to edit your wavetables by clicking on the pencil in the top right hand corner there um, and this allows you to import audio from various sources um, and create your own wavetables yourself. Now this almost just deserves a whole separate video in itself but I highly recommend just uh, loading your other synth sounds that you've made into Serum through this import option and messing around with them because you can get some quite weird results. Um, you can see at the bottom here there's a wavetable view which is essentially showing you each frame of the wavetable. Uh, this is the thing that you're scrolling through when you move the wavetable position. You're moving from left to right, essentially. Um, so it's quite good for giving you a breakdown here, and you can also go in and edit it if you so wish with a variety of different tools, like so. So I'm gonna close that now. Um, uh, now, so Oscillator B essentially is set up exactly the same. Um, and then we've got our sub and noise oscillators on the left, which are much more basic and easy to understand. So the sub oscillator essentially just allows you to choose from, from some standard wave shapes, sine, triangle, saw, square. Uh, set the octave and the pan and the level. And the noise uh, just lets you choose from some preset noise tables. Like so, so that's the, the click for a kick drum, for example. That's just white noise. Um, and you've got your phase and RAND dials, pitch, pan, and level here as well, if you so wish. Um, but not quite as much of a level of control as the wavetable, because that's what oscillators A and B are for. So that's a kind of general overview of uh, how to use all the oscillators, um, how to start getting involved in the wavetable aspect of Serum, which makes it so powerful. In the next part, we're going to look at 
getting into some modulation and really starting to build a proper patch. Um, and a few other little tips and tricks that just uh, really bring this synth to life and really allow you to make some great sounds right out of the box. So make sure that you click through to part three uh, and I will see you there.